Good morning, friends. I am Professor Sanjay Sharnal, Department of Geological Sciences, Jadavpur University. And uh, today I will give you a talk on concept and classification of metamorphic phases and phases series and an introduction to high temperature and high pressure metamorphism. But before going into the details of my topic, I would like to introduce the term metamorphism first. Metamorphism epitomizes uh, solid state transformation of crustal rocks involving mineral content, mineral composition, microtexture or grain size under the influence of changing physicochemical condition that was prevailing at the time of their formation. Metamorphism actually encompasses the entire plethora of uh, adjustment that rocks have to undertake in order to achieve a low temperature configuration when it is subjected to a very high temperature and high pressure condition. Now, what causes these changes? Temperature, pressure and fluid activity are the three major uh, aspects of metamorphism of which temperature is the most important one. Temperature, the effect of temperature on metamorphism can be manifested by four ways. It helps in developing the straight polygonal grain margin formation and uh, giving the straight uh, recrystallized mosaic texture. And secondly, the coalescence of the strain free subgrains at higher temperature to form bigger grains with high uh, volume, low surface area. And uh, thirdly, with increasing temperature, the thermodynamic parameters of the pre metamorphic assemblages changed, and that leads to the destabilization of this assemblage and promotes metamorphic reactions. These metamorphic reactions are mostly devolatilizations and that leads to the uh, drying up of the rock with increasing temperature and leads to stabilization of minerals which have less structural water or completely anhydrous. Now the role of pressure in metamorphism. The pressure of metamorphism can be broadly classified into two types, the lithostatic pressure or the confining pressure and the directive pressure or the deviatory stress. Confining pressure or the lithostatic pressure is equal in all the directions and it does not promote any deformation in the rock and it can be calculated in by the formula P litho is equal to H rho G where H is the uh, column thickness and rho is the density of the rock and G is the uh, gravity due to acceleration. And uh, deviatory stress on the other hand is uh, responsible for uh, deformation and it causes uh, structures like formation of foliation, folding, tensional cracks like this. Now uh, the when metamorphism starts, the metamorphism starts just beyond the uh, milieu of diagenesis at very low temperature range 150 plus minus 50 degree centigrade at a very low pressure condition that corresponds to uh, 3 kilometer of depth. And while the higher temperature side of metamorphism uh, coincides with the melting, melting of the crustal rocks and uh, where we get uh, formation of magmatites at the temperature range of 850 plus minus 50 degree centigrade. The maximum pressure limit that metamorphism can record is in the range of uh, 60 uh, gigapascal or 100 gigapascal corresponding to a depth of nearly uh, 200 kilometer. Process like uh, magma ponding at the base of the crust uh, or inside the crust or uh, subduction of the lithosphere and uh, collision of the continental plates, all these leads to the change in the pressure temperature condition of the crustal rocks. This uh, time dependent interplay of the tectonics and the heat flow mechanism by the process of conduction, convection, advection or uh, radioactive decay all leads to the um, perturbation of the steady state geotherm to a transient geotherm and trigger the metamorphism. Now, the metamorphism can be classified into two broad types. One is of local and another is of regional uh, extent. Local metamorphism is always associated with uh, the magmatic uh, activity inside the crust and the high temperature available during the cooling of this magma um, intrusive rock uh, actually part of the um, uh, surrounding thermal structure and causes metamorphism. The intensity of these metamorphic changes gradually diminishes with uh, lowering of temperature difference with the intrusive rock and form a aureole and uh, this is known as the contact aureole of the rock. 
this contactorial rock have don't need any deviatory stress to form and its texture is uh, typically coarse grained and uh, it is known as the Hornfelsic texture. Regional metamorphism on the other hand as the term suggests it is widely uh, extended and uh, the most important regional metamorphism is the orogenic metamorphism which actually occurred at the uh, convergent plate margin where compressional tectonics leads to formation of a highly deformed metamorphic rocks with well developed foliation nisocity like this. One of the major emphasis point of metamorphic study is to ascertain the peak PT condition of metamorphism and the, uh, and the transient geothermal gradient uh, with a motor to evolve uh, the idea of tectonothermal evolution of the crust which actually undergoing the metamorphism. With this idea the metamorphic petrologists try to solve the PT range of metamorphism during tectonism and uh, gradually evolve the concept of uh, metamorphic grades, the depth zone of metamorphism, the isograde classification of metamorphic zones and finally uh, zoom into the concept of metamorphic phases and phases series. Metamorphic grade is actually a uh, imprecise relative term of uh, to classify the relative intensity of metamorphic rocks. In this process uh, the metamorphic rocks of the area can be classified into very low grade, low grade, medium grade, high grade or very high grade, but there is no precise PT estimation. And during prograde metamorphism with increasing temperature the any low grade rocks can be transformed to a high grade one or during retrogression the high grade rocks will transform to a low grade one. A better scheme of classification evolve when uh, the each metamorphic grade divided into different zones on the basis of first appearance of some minerals which is known as the index mineral and uh, these index minerals uh, actually identify the different zones as for example in this figure uh, you show that uh, it is the figure of the Dalardian complex of Scotland here uh, uh, scientist Barrow find the zonations from uh, chloride zone to biotite zone, then the garnet zone, then stodolite, then kyanite, then silimanite. And whenever one zone transgresses to other, it crosses the line which is known as the isograd. And isograd is nothing but the uh, reaction line which is forming the typical index mineral. And this index mineral uh, when forms through that uh, reaction boundary uh, intersects the uh, plane of the mapping and uh, form the isograd. Isograds uh, have some uh, definite uh, drawbacks as well. Isograd mapping uh, is very much dependent upon the uh, bulk composition of the rock as well. As for example, in normal pellites, the uh, garnet in isograd appears at lower temperature compared to the andalusite in isograd. But if the bulk is high aluminous pellite, andalusite appears earlier compared to garnet because of the enhanced stability of the mineral. In secondly, in some rocks, particularly in calcicate rocks, the uh, minerals or the isograds are very much dependent upon the fluid composition. As for example, the ulastronite, uh, ulastronite in isograd uh, is dependent upon the reaction calcite plus quartz giving ulastronite plus carbon dioxide. In this reaction, if x co2 partial pressure is more, then the ulastronite formation will be depressed and will get more calcite plus quartz instead of ulastronite. Thirdly, most of the index minerals have a wide range of PT stability where they can stably coexisted with other index minerals appearing earlier or late. So all these processes uh, suggested that a single mineral is not very uh, conducive to ascertain the PT condition of metamorphism. And on, the, on this basis the metamorphic concept starts developing. Goldsmiths in 1912 while working in the uh, Oslo region of Norway uh, identified contrasting mineral assemblages table in different uh, bulk compositions. Escola uh, in Oryjarvi region of uh, Finland uh, ascertained the views of Goldsmith and confirmed that there is a constant relationship between the bulk composition of the rock and the mineral chemistry. He also find that the Oslo rocks having 
some of the Oslo rocks having similar compositions with that of the uh, Orjervi rocks uh, have different mineral compositions. As for example, the Muscovite biotite assemblage of Orjervi rock uh, is gradually transformed to chemically equivalent pair of cordierite and uh, muscovite, cordierite and potash feldspar uh, in the pellitic bulk. And he explained this as the effect of pressure and temperature. And he expressed this in a reaction as well, where muscovite plus quartz plus uh, biotite is equal to cordierite plus potash feldspar plus H2O. And where cordierite plus potash feldspar stabilizes at higher temperature side, on the basis of this, Escola uh, confirmed that the rocks of the Orjervi region is metamorphosed at lower temperature condition compared to the, that of the Oslo region. And he evolved the idea of metamorphic phases, where he told that the metamorphic, any metamorphic rock that has attained uh, equilibrium at certain PT condition, its chemical composition is definitely controlled by the bulk composition with pouring of new new data regarding the stability of the minerals, 5, Turner, Virgin, all they are modified this uh, metamorphic phases concept and give a new definition which shows, shows metamorphic phases is a set of mineral assemblages repeatedly associated in space and time. So, that there is a, a constant and therefore predictable relationship between the mineral composition and the bulk chemical composition of the rock. The corollary of this uh, metamorphic phases definition is that rocks with identical bulk composition and identical mineral composition must be metamorphosed at identical PT condition belong to same phases, whatever may be the space and age separation of these two rock types. Secondly, rocks of a identical bulk when metamorphosed in different phases condition will definitely produce different mineral assemblages. And thirdly, rocks metamorphosis in same phases condition producing different bulk must be of different bulk chemistry. Metamorphic phases uh, actually uh, identifies the regular and predictable relationship between the bulk chemistry and the mineral composition of the rock and uh, they are as a function of pressure and temperature. This uh, metamorphic phases actually confirms the stabilization of different stable mineral assemblages at a certain PT condition, but fail to give the precise PT condition of metamorphism. And the boundary of this metamorphic phases actually marks the margin, uh, marks the different metamorphic reactions and uh, these metamorphic reactions sometimes they are very continuous and uh, not a precise line and in PT space they are uh, continuous over a range. On the basis of this, Escola and later workers classified the metamorphic rocks, uh, metamorphic phases series into different types. Now, in this diagram, uh, we will find that there are seven phases for the regional metamorphism and four phases for the contact metamorphism. The seven regional phases metamorphisms are the geolite phases, the prehnite pumpelite phases, the greensist phases, the greensist amphibolite transition zone, the amphibolite phases, the granulite phases, the blue cyst phases and the eclogite phases. The greensist amphibolite transition zone is actually not a phases, it is a sub phases. So, it may not give a full phases uh, category. The rocks of the phases of Hornfelsic metamorphism uh, includes albite epidote Hornfels, Hornblende Hornfels, pyroxene Hornfels and the sanitarite phases. Now, uh, from this figure it is quite clear that a very steep geothermal gradient where DTDP is nearly 55 degree centigrade per kilometer is required for the form for the development of these Hornfelsic rocks. While an intermediate geothermal gradient that is DTDP 25 to 30 degree centigrade per kilometer is required for the development of uh, phases uh, like the green cyst uh, amphibolite granulite like this. A shallow geothermal gradient with 15 degree centigrade per kilometer uh, produces uh, rocks of eclogite and blue cyst phases. Now, I will give the salient points of different phases first. 
geolite facies uh, actually developed in the ocean floor where the igneous rocks, basaltic compositions, they transform to uh, mineral assemblage like the geolite plus chlorite uh, plus albite plus uh, quartz with some clay minerals. Geolite is actually a mineral hydrated calcium aluminum uh, silicate. Uh, the minerals like the wericite, the steelbite, the hewlandite, the lamantite, uh, all these minerals stable at very low temperature condition around 200 degrees centigrade just beyond the diagenesis. And these minerals does not need any deviatory stress to form as for example, uh, this geolite facies rocks are completely devoid of any foliation. And since the geolites essentially contains calcium, uh, geolite facies rocks are completely absent in the uh, pelitic bulk as the pelitic bulk is calcium poor. The stability of the geolites is somewhat dependent upon the XCO2 pressure. If XCO2 is more, then uh, calcite plus clay minerals will stable instead of the geolite. Secondly, uh, the prehnite pumpelite facies. It is another sub green cyst facies occurring at very low temperature just beyond the green uh, geolite facies. Here, the minerals like prehnite pumpelite will stabilize. Uh, prehnite pumpelites are also hydrated calcium aluminum silicate, uh, uh, while in pumpelite we have FEMG along with the CAL. These minerals forms uh, through the breakdown of uh, geolites like the wericite, the lelomontite in the range of temperature 350 degree centigrade at very low pressure around uh, 2.5 kilo bar. Next is the green cyst facies. Green cyst facies uh, starts around 400 degree centigrade and the transgression from prehnite pumpelite to green cyst facies is marked by the breakdown of prehnite pumpelite and the geolites and leads to the stabilization of minerals like uh, actinolite, uh, chlorite, the uh, epidote, the joycite, the calcite, the uh, ilmenite, etc. In pelitic rock, which is actually a potassium rich, aluminum rich, calcium poor bulk, there we find minerals like calcite, uh, minerals like uh, muscovite, biotite, chlorite, along with some uh, garnet. Uh, very uh, manganese rich garnet, otherwise garnet will not appear. In calc silicate rock, we will find formation of talc. And uh, the name of this facies shows that the rocks must be green and it is green because of the preponderance of minerals like actinolite, like uh, chlorite, like epidote. All these minerals are green colored. And, uh, the formation of the actinolite is again dependent upon the XCO2 as well as the FEMG condition of the bulk. XCO2 when it is more, the actinolite formation will be suppressed and calcite and chlorite will be favored. On the other hand, if the bulk is more iron rich, actinolite will be favored. If the bulk is slightly magnesium rich, uh, an amphibole which is known as the Cummingtonite will appear instead of the actinolite. Now, the transition from green cyst to amphibolite facies is through a transition zone and uh, this is a not a pure uh, metamorphic facies, it is a sub facies. And in this transition zone, the basic rocks particularly show a, a drastic change in composition of the plagioclase, where the plagioclase changes from albite to oligoclase. That means, anorthite content changes from 3 to 18. This is known as the peristorite jump. The amphibole, which was actually or actinolite initially, now changes to uh, slightly aluminous one through some uh, substitutions like the shenmaketic substitutions, the pargacetic substitutions, and uh, chloride uh, getting diminished in composition becomes more magnesium. Uh, epidote also getting diminished in uh, modal proportion and ultimately disappears. In pelitic bulk, uh, the garnet, normal garnet, almanin pyrogarnet, it first takes its appearance. So, garnet in isograd at this uh, transition zone. In calc silicate bulk, uh, tremolite appears in place of the talc.
or tremolite talc coexist. Now, in the amphibolite phases, amphibolite phases is around 550 degree centigrade, and here in the basic rock, the plagioclase even more becomes uh, anorthite rich, it becomes andesine, that means anorthite nearly 45, and uh, more importantly, the rock is essentially consists of plagioclase and amphibole, the rock name is amphibolite, and in pelitic bulk, storolite. Uh, makes his appearance uh, that marks the initiation of amphibolite phases in palytic bulk. In calcisilicate bulk, in the amphibolite phases, uh, the mineral diapside appears. Now, from amphibolite phases to uh, granulite phases, uh, again there is a transition zone, and in this transition zone, in basic rock, uh, we will find that clinopyroxene starts appearing and along with hornblende plus plagioclase. Sometimes garnet may also appear and this garnet uh, forms to the breakdown of epidote. And uh, in uh, pelitic rock, the muscovite breaks down completely uh, through the reaction muscovite plus quartz plus minus albite giving rise to potash feldspar plus silimanite plus water and this is known as the orthoclase silimanite isograd and this is most important reaction in petrology because is, this is marks the final demise of muscovite in pelitic bulk and first appearance of potash feldspar. And uh, in granulite phases when uh, the um, pelitic rock and the basic rock when they enter into the granulite phases, uh, they starts to form typical anhydrous mineral assemblages as granulite phases is the high temperature phases of the uh, metamorphism. In pelitic rock, uh, uh, in granulite phases, we get stabilization of minerals like potash feldspar, silimanite, spinel, uh, cordierite, etc. In basic rock, orthopyroxene starts appearing along with clinopyroxene and then plagioclase, then hornblende, all these are stable. So, uh, this is actually the granulite phases condition is. Now, if we take the case of the very steep geothermal gradient phases like the albite epidote hornfels, hornblende hornfels, the uh, uh, pyroxene hornfels, they have the compositions very similar to the green cyst phases, amphibolite phases and the granulite phases. The uh, Sanidinite phases which forms very rarely, very uh, close to the igneous intrusive uh, uh, consists of minerals uh, like sanidin which is the high temperature polymorph of potash feldspar. The shallow geothermal gradient uh, uh, actually leads to the phases blue cyst and eclogite and blue cyst and, uh, and eclogite phases, these phases are high pressure low temperature and high pressure moderate to high temperature phases. Blue cyst phases marks the stabilization of minerals like uh, jadeite uh, which forms through the breakdown of albite. Uh, the minerals like glaucophene, glaucophene is a uh, sodic amphibole where the aluminum goes into the octahedral side instead of the tetrahedral side and enhances its stability. Uh, the minerals like lotionite, the aragonite uh, like this. In eclogite phases, which has a uh, two part, one is uh, high pressure, low moderate temperature and one other is the high pressure, high temperature side. The high pressure moderate temperature uh, eclogite will coexist along with some epidote lachonite, along with this glaucophene, uh, some omphacitic pyroxene and uh, garnet. While you go to the high pressure, high temperature side of the eclogite phases, there the typical omphacitic pyroxene and pyrogarnet along with some kyanite stable. So, this is actually all about the salient points of the metamorphic phases. And now, I come to the second part that metamorphic phases series concept. Uh, some of the metamorphic terrains of the world show characteristic variation in the peak PT condition in space and time indicating progressive metamorphism. Uh, along a particular line which is known as the metamorphic field gradient. That means, these terrains show a series of uh, metamorphic phases assemblages developed uh, from one side to other side. Mayashiro on the basis of this uh, 
developed the concept of metamorphic phases series, where he told that the characteristic phases that developed in the in this metamorphic terrains that showing the progressive metamorphism all depends upon the p t ratio of this metamorphic field gradient. He classified this metamorphic field gradient uh, uh, metamorphic phases series into three types. Uh, one is the low p t type, where andalusite at the low temperature and silimanite at the high temperature stabilizes. Uh, this is also known as the andalusite silimanite type. We also know that andalusite is the mineral that stabilizes at the low pressure and silimanite is at the high pressure polymorph of Al2 SiO5 that stabilizes at the high temperature. Example of this uh, metamorphic phases series is uh, Ryoku, the Abokuma and the Bushian, all these are uh, low PT type. Here maximum temperature of 750 degree or 700 degree reaches within a very uh, low pressure condition of 3.5 kilo bar. Now the medium PT metamorphic phases series where kyanite stabilizes at low temperature and silimanite stabilizes at uh, higher temperature and uh, uh, there we get temperature around uh, 850 degree centigrade at a pressure of 7.5 to 8.5 kilo bar. And uh, example is the Barovian uh, metamorphic sequence as observed in the uh, Dalradian complex of Scotland. The high PT uh, metamorphic phases series where minerals like uh, glaucophane and jadeite, jadeite stable and uh, these are the minerals that stable at very high pressure condition and example of this uh, is Sambagua and San Francisco. Now uh, the last part of my topic is uh, the introduction to high temperature and high pressure metamorphism. The high temperature and high pressure, uh, high, the high temperature metamorphism is characterized by minerals that uh, are typically anhydrous that form through dehydration melting in phases conditions like uh, the amphibolite granulite transition or the granulites or the higher uh, temperature side of the granulite phases. In pellitic bulk, uh, the uh, amphibolite granulite transition zone, the first um, initiation of the melting starts at the fluid present melting where muscovite breaks down to form the potash feldspar and uh, silimanite and it is actually marks the formation of uh, initiation of the migmatite. In the granulite phases uh, under fluid absent melting condition the typical anhydrous minerals like spinel, like uh, saffirin, hypersine, uh, cordierite all these forms in rocks like condalite, like leptinite, metric granulite, all this. There is another part of granulite phases where temperature goes beyond 900 degree centigrade, which is called the ultra high temperature of metamorphism. And this is very rare. And uh, in this UHT part of granulite phases, there are some typical minerals stabilizers like saffron plus quartz association, which indicates temperature in the range of 1000 to 1050 degree centigrade and uh, hypersine plus silimanite plus quartz that is also indicating 950 to 1000 degree centigrade, uh, osmolite uh, plus quartz, uh, spinel plus quartz, all these indicates temperature very high, but this spinel must be poor in zinc. Now the high pressure metamorphism part. High pressure metamorphism indicates the minerals that are formed through pressure dependent net transfer reactions having very low molar volume and higher molar density. The minerals like jadeite, the glaucophane, the umphacite, the garnet, uh, pyrogarnet, the kyanite, etc. The metamorphic phases which actually uh, have these minerals are uh, blue cyst phases, the eclogite phases the high pressure side of the granulite phases and the ultra high pressure side of the uh, eclogite phases. In the blue cyst phases and eclogite phases the mineral assemblage I already have discussed. In the high pressure side of the granulite phases uh, the orthopyroxene will not be there, orthopyroxene will break down while the UHT part of the uh, eclogite phases will find that the quartz is not stable and here the high pressure polymorph of quartz, the quasite is stable, sometimes micro diamond is also stable. So these are actually the regions of ultra high temperature of metamorphism. Now to summarize the entire topic, uh, it is found that uh, the 
most important part of metamorphic petrology is to ascertain the PT condition of metamorphism and here the single mineral will not do the job. The metamorphic face is actually not a particular rock or a particular mineral, it is an assemblage of minerals that is stabilized within a certain range of PT condition and that definitely indicates the temperature pressure condition of metamorphism attained during the tectonic processes. The metamorphic facies series concept is uh, developing with time and uh, in regional metamorphism and the contact metamorphism this that holds good. The facies series uh, shows variation in the MFG and uh, that developed different facies mainly on the basis of the stability of minerals like uh, L2SI polymorphs, the jadeites, then the glucophen and we will find that the tectonism again played the important role in forming these geothermal gradients. And finally, this high temperature and high pressure metamorphic part where we will find stabilization of minerals that form through uh, partial melting or that form through typical pressure dependent net transfer reactions at specific uh, metamorphic phases conditions. And these all part of my topic. Thank you very much for patience sharing.